Ink Ribbon. So in the spirit of cosplay and making things in real life, I thought we would do a tutorial together today to make these ball, jewel, whatever you want to call them things from Resident Evil 3. Why did I choose my least favorite puzzle in all of Resident Evil to do this? I don't know. I just something about these these little jewel egg things calls out to me and they're pretty simple to make. So here is everything you're going to need. Epoxy resin, oval shaped mold, clear super glue, mica powder, and a lighter. It's going to be pretty much for all of them except for the amber one. Here's the good one. Here's the first version I tried to make, which turned out pretty awful. So we're going to go ahead and take our mold. And uh, I, so if you look at the one in the game, it's got kind of this faceted look. So I chose this one, which in this mold is this one right here. I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned to get it to, to look like this and not like this. Because as you can see, this is not clear. It's just like, uh. Whereas this one, you can still see through it. So I took my mica powder. This is uh, azure blue, but you can also just use like silver. Um, <laughs> don't ask me why I own this brush. It's a long story. But I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just dust around the inside of the mold. And there you go. Check that out. So the resin is going to grab onto that and it's going to turn out like this. I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna go ahead and mix the resin. And this is equal parts resin. Just follow the instructions on whichever one you end up getting and you really don't need a lot. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. This is hard to do while filming. Respect to all the craft channels that are out there. Now here comes the fun part. You just gotta mix it and mix it and mix it. Um, I wouldn't recommend like furiously mixing it because you're going to end up with a lot of bubbles. Um, but the thing about resin is no matter how mixed you think it is, it's not mixed. It's very deceptive because, you know, like this, oh, I've mixed it together. It's good. Nope. Got to keep just mixing and mixing and mixing. To be safe, I generally do this for like, I don't know, two minutes or so. Um, that That's how much you have to mix it. and. I learned this from watching craft channels. What happens if you don't mix it this long is your resin will come out kind of rubbery and flexible, uh, but sometimes it just won't cure at all and it'll be wet. I don't know, a lot of weird things can happen. So uh, I'm gonna fast forward to when I'm done mixing. All right, I'm gonna say that that's been long enough and now it's time to go ahead and pour the resin. Now, you want to pour it as close to the surface as humanly possible without overflowing because um, it like ever so slightly shrinks as it cures. But we also want it to be perfectly flat so that we can glue it to the second piece without any issues. And also make sure you're doing this on an even surface so that, you know, it doesn't go more to one side. And I would say that that looks good. Now the final step is to pop the bubbles, and that's what your lighter is for. Do, do, do. Don't do it too long, because then you'll like burn your mold. And there you go. And now you just have to wait 24 hours. All right, and here I'm just going to simply super glue the two pieces together to form one jewel. Um, I don't know what super glue you use, but uh, apparently this one requires 24 hours to cure, so I'm gonna secure it with just some scotch tape. Uh, but just make sure you read the label of whatever adhesive you're using, make sure you use it safely, and don't inhale it, because, yeah. So we're just gonna leave that for 24 hours, and I'm going to show you how I made the obsidian one. For this, you'll need, again, resin, the oval-shaped mold, and now you're gonna need black or gray mica powder, as well as copper or brown mica powder, and a lighter, and clear super glue. All right, so next we have obsidian. This is the failed one that I did. Again, I tried the glitter, didn't work, just ew. And then I did a second attempt, and that turned out 
much better. Um, I wish I had black pigment, but I don't. Um, I just have like really dark gray, so I used that. But I'd say this is pretty close. Now, I've got these two powders. I'm gonna primarily use the bronze with a little bit of uh, deep copper, or as I call these, copper and brown, but whatever. Now I'm just gonna do this in a separate container. You really just need a, a tiny bit. This stuff will get you pretty far. Also, be careful with these because this powder gets everywhere and it's like super glitter. You will literally never be able to remove it for the rest of your life if you get it on something, so. And there's a little sprinkle of the brown. Now, we're just gonna put a little bit because this is kind of more like the accent coloring. Really don't need a lot. Get that nice, rich, metallic color. If you're starting with a fresh batch, make sure to mix, mix, mix your resin. This resin is already mixed, so I'm good. Now, being careful of my silver jewel, which is still cooking, um, I'm gonna go with the smooth one, which is this one right here. Unfortunately, no matter what you do, it's probably going to end up just all <laughs> gooping together. And then I've got my pearl gray, which is, as you can see, very, very dark. And that will be for the quote unquote black part. Before getting the other powder, I need to clean this because you do not want to cross contaminate your um, mica powders because it'll be a mess. Okay, so in yet another container. Just add, a, add as much black as you want because we want it to be dark. And then we're going to add the resin. Same thing, we're just gonna pour it until it fills to the top. This is a good idea to move it around and mix it so that it hopefully affects where some of the brown goes. Um, if you're someone who's good with resin, you probably know that you can do like UV resin for the brown part and all that, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. And if any of you happen to have a crafting channel and you also are one of my viewers where are those resident evil crafting tutorials let's collaborate wow now i am really struggling to get like the last last bit of this actually you know what i can do i can pour more of this copper brown Now I'm gonna say that those two are ready to go. I would do the amber as well, but unfortunately I need the same shape of the obsidian for the amber one, because these are all different shapes. So, um, you know what? Let's make a red jewel, just because we've got some extra resin. Got this alcohol ink um, that came with the kit I bought, which you will see in the third step, but we're gonna go ahead and Make a red jewel as a, a bonus. All right, and I have learned with these inks, less is more. I don't know how much resin I have, but we're just gonna make it work. Probably should have mixed this before I poured it. <laughs> All right, 
I don't know what's going to happen with that one. I guess we'll find out. That's going to be our fun experiment for this video. Okay, now, uh, one thing in case I haven't already mentioned, these need to be covered and put somewhere where your pets will not get to them, your children will not get to them, because uh, epoxy resin is extremely toxic. You don't want to be breathing it in, you don't want to be getting it on your skin, like, just treat it like, you know, any other chemical, and cover it for 24 hours. And just to prove a point, this is what happens when resin doesn't cure correctly. Um, because I didn't mix this one properly, you can see that it's like gummy and flexible, which is not really what you want. Uh, if it is what you want, I don't know how to get this effect on purpose. But anyway. Alright, so just like with the crystal jewel, um, I'm just going to super glue these two pieces together. And uh, also secure them with tape. And same thing, leave them for 24 hours and then... We'll see how that goes. And finally, for the amber jewel, you are going to need epoxy resin, oval shaped mold, some dirt, alcohol ink, preferably in honeycomb or some type of yellow, clear super glue, and a lighter. Okay, so the first one that I made came out really dark. Um, this alcohol ink is, is tricky to work with and I want to explain the reason I'm using alcohol ink instead of mica powder is mica powder will make the resin opaque which means it's not clear and we don't want that. Amber is notoriously see-through, you know, think of Jurassic Park with like the mosquito. So um, alcohol ink, that's what it does. It makes things clear but still colored. And uh, for this one I decided to go really light on it because I figured that uh, too dark with too light would kind of even itself out and you'll see in the end result it kind of did but I would probably recommend doing about two drops if you can manage to do like a half drop in there more power to you so exactly the same as the other ones you're just gonna mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it you cannot mix it enough because I promise you it, it will come out like the red jewel if you don't mix it properly and I'm just going to pour it in there. Um, I ended up having quite a bit left over. I made too much, so I just went ahead and filled the other one so I could make some bonus jewels because you don't want to waste resin. Um, once it hardens, it's completely unusable. You might as well put it in a mold. Anything you've got nearby, turn it into a coaster, whatever. But if, if you've got too much resin, just go ahead and use it and get into the habit of making the exact amount that you need because you don't want to waste it and it's a pain in the ass to try to mix just a little bit more. Now here's the fun part of this. You can use literally anything you want. You can use dirt, you can use sticks, you can use dead bugs, whatever you want to preserve in the quote unquote amber. Um, if you've got any house plants, this is a great time to make them pay some rent and steal a little bit of their soil, which is what I did. This is my house plant named Jeffrey, contributing to my video. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the dirt that I took from Jeffrey and sprinkle it into the amber. Um, you do want to submerge it and make sure that it's under the surface of the resin because anything that's protruding is going to have to be like scraped off and you don't want to have to do all that. But just like the other ones, once this is ready to go, put it somewhere, cover it, and wait for it to cure for 24 hours. Alright, so... The amber is cured. You can see it's very, very light. I probably should have put one more drop, but whatever. It's all good. Um, and these are the other extra pieces that I made. Now, if I take the first amber piece I made, which was too dark, and combine it with this one, from the side it doesn't look great, but when you look at it from above or below, it kind of becomes the perfect color that I wanted. So when you do this, because uh, I know you're going to, just keep that in mind. But just like the other ones, I'm going to super glue and wait. And then we should be done. And I'm going to go ahead and combine these two and just make a, a yellow jewel just for the hell of it. And here we go. We've got the crystal jewel, obsidian jewel, and the amber jewel. Ready to be put into that damn clock puzzle, which makes absolutely no sense. Now, this is just a simple example of what you can make using a little a little bit of resin. It's really fun to work with, um, but there's so many different key items that you can make from Resident Evil. The red and blue jewels from Resident Evil 1, the red uh, 
fist stones from Resident Evil 2. You could also use this to make medallions if you've got like metallic mica powders. I mean, there's so many things you can do. So if there is another prop that you guys would like to see me make from Resident Evil, uh, leave it in the comments. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great day. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.